Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss ring galaxies once again, but specifically a very bizarre discovery that actually nobody expected of a galaxy with nine rings. And actually almost perfectly circular rings, making this a very unique and obviously never before seen discovery, but also surprisingly providing a direct evidence for a relatively old theory of how these galaxies very likely formed, how they evolve, and what's going to happen to all of these rings afterwards. But first I guess let me show you the image of the galaxy before we discuss what you're looking at. And well, here it is. This is a galaxy known as Lida 1313-424 that's approximately 570 million light years away from us. And just like so many other galaxies, this one was also discovered completely by accident. And only discovered because of those rings that suddenly appeared in some of the observations. Now normally when we look at these galaxies and when we actually find rings in them, it's already considered to be a relatively lucky find. For example, the famous Hawks object that basically contains this really large ring around it is still one of the most mysterious and one of the most well-known ring galaxies. But we obviously have a lot of other examples, such as the famous Cartwheel galaxy, imaged by the James Webb. And when looking at all of the galaxies discovered so far, these are actually pretty rare. Only about 1 in 10,000 galaxies is a ring galaxy, and in most cases they do appear quite different. Here's another interesting example, NGC 922, that contains rings of unusual shape. Whereas this example, ARP 10, seems to contain a ring and somewhat unusual misshapen split arms that used to be part of the spiral structure. And here is one of the stranger shapes, a galaxy known as ARP 417. This is actually a combination of two galaxies that are essentially merging together, forming a ring in the process. And while when it comes to a lot of these ring galaxies, all of them seem to have formed through some kind of a collision. Here is actually one of the most famous examples of how we think this happens, visible in ARP 148. Basically a collision between some kind of a large spiral galaxy and something maybe a little bit smaller that usually passes through the galaxy, disturbing it in a process, which then ends up forming rings. We actually call these CRGs or collisional ring galaxies, and very often they differ in shapes depending on what kind of a galaxy collided and depending on the angle. Now usually when it's two larger galaxies, they'll actually produce something a little bit more misshapen, so kind of similar to what you see right here, or even right here. But in some cases we actually do find galaxies that basically have almost perfect circular rings, and in some cases their origin was a little bit more difficult to explain. Now as I mentioned, the most well known and still the biggest mystery is the famous Hogs object, and if you actually want to learn more about this particular object, the video in the description talks about this in detail, but there are a few galaxies out there that do seem to contain perfect rings, and very often no exact explanation on how they formed. But a few decades ago there was a potential proposition and a potential explanation still involving galactic collisions. Here this would have to be an almost face-on collision with a much smaller galaxy, usually at least 10 times less massive than the central galaxy, which will essentially result in ripples moving away from the center and star formation along those ripples, which then basically appears as rings. And interestingly enough, only a few months ago we actually got to see this galaxy. This was captured by the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, and it's a galaxy approximately 800 million light years away from us in the constellation of Aquarius. And what made this galaxy kind of special is the fact that it contained multiple perfect rings equidistant from the center. In some sense providing us with direct evidence for this hypothesis of galactic formation involving rings. With this galaxy basically being the record holder. Three rings. And it didn't take long to beat this record by using new observations from the Hubble and from the Keck telescope. And here we had this gigantic spiral galaxy, approximately two and a half times the size of the Milky Way, that didn't just contain the rings, but also contained a very small trail that connected this galaxy with a small dwarf galaxy that passed right through its center. Now here the actual impactor is much smaller and is not as easily visible, but it's definitely there, approximately 130,000 light years away from the main galaxy, and it seems to contain a leading trail of gas that remained after the collision. Which in essence tells us exactly what happened in this case and what formed these rings. This galaxy is now nicknamed Bullseye, and that's because in this case this was basically a bullseye-like collision right through the center of this galaxy, as a much smaller dwarf galaxy passed right through it, producing very similar effects to what we usually expect from a tiny rock falling in the pond. With the rock in this case visible in this image as this unusual blue dwarf galaxy that's just a little bit to the left of the bullseye. 
But all this very likely happening approximately 50 million years ago, and every single ring forming in the center and traveling to the outskirts of this galaxy during this time. And here is roughly how this galaxy compares to the Milky Way, if seen from the top. But here the oldest rings are no longer easily visible. As a matter of fact, it took a little bit of extra effort to discover all of them. But by using the WMCAC Observatory and the Hubble Telescope, Imad Pasha, Peter Van Dokkum and their team definitively confirmed the existence of nine rings, with the oldest ring approximately 250,000 light years away from the center. And this, of course, directly confirms the predictions from before and provides evidence for the formation of ring galaxies through galactic collision. And basically here the rings very likely moved outwards from the center of the collision in pretty much exactly the same way as predicted by various models. And interestingly, in that theory, the existence of these multiple rings was predicted, but it just we've never seen any galaxy containing so many rings in order to confirm if it was even possible. And yet here we have a galaxy that confirms everything and tells us exactly how these rings spread in the last 50 million years, with the first two rings extremely likely spreading out in much wider circles and also forming relatively quickly in the first few millions of years. But the additional rings very likely took much longer time because the flyby of the smaller galaxy mostly affected the first rings, giving them the most boost. And so the additional rings afterwards were created as a kind of an after effect. But I guess what's really interesting here is that none of the individual stars were most likely affected at all, and specifically their orbits. It's as if the galaxy passed through the larger galaxy, but none of the stars even noticed it. And that's mostly because of the distance between the stars and also the overall smaller mass of the dwarf galaxy, which are unlikely to have changed the orbits of the stars too much. But it did pile up some stars into larger groups in order to form certain ring-like shapes. And much more importantly, it affected the dust and the gas. All of the gas was suddenly carried outward and started mixing with a lot of dust that was already present here, which then led to the formation of new stars visible as these very bright blue patches. This is of course a very similar phenomenon we usually observe in a lot of other ring galaxies. And so all of the new starburst activity was extremely likely caused by this collision. But in this case, because this was a face-on collision, literally right through the center, it didn't actually change the shape of the galaxy too much. But in galaxies like the cartwheel, where it was not a perfect collision, it did transform the shape just a little bit. In some other examples, this is much more extreme, especially if the mass of the collider is much, much bigger. And so in some sense, this is actually the first ever example we have of such a perfect collision between a large galaxy and a small galaxy, where the small galaxy dives directly through the center and causes ripples very similar to what we expect from a typical pond, and then forming these perfect rings we've never seen before. Actually, nine perfect rings. And in this case, researchers actually suspect that there might be a tenth ring that's possibly no longer visible and very likely existed a few million years ago. But it now basically faded, especially as those younger stars went supernova, leaving nothing behind, with the ring itself fading over time. And if it exists, it's extremely likely at least three times as far away as the ninth ring in this image, essentially making this galaxy almost 400,000 light years across. And so in that sense, when it comes to this galaxy, this is just the beginning of research. There are still a lot of unanswered questions, especially questions when it comes to star formation, but also questions in regards to improving current models in order to help us understand how these galaxies evolve for billions of years. Because as I mentioned in the beginning, this galaxy, the hoax object, is still actually extremely mysterious. The origin of the rings around this galaxy are currently unknown, and quite a few similar objects exist out there that cannot be explained easily. And so these very bizarre galaxies, with very strange rings around them, still have so many questions to answer. But when it comes to recent unusual galaxies discovered in the last few years, this is definitely one of the most exciting. A galaxy currently nicknamed Bullseye that we're most likely going to discuss in some of the future videos. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.